Hello math class, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson two of the fourth unit. Uh, it's titled sine and cosine laws for obtuse triangles. And I drew a little picture up here. I wanted to point out that when we talk about obtuse triangles, one of the angles is guaranteed to be greater than 90 degrees. So it is going to have a more open looking angle like this. At, uh, it cannot have more than one of them. It needs to have just have one to be an obtuse triangle. If it has more than one, it's not going to be a triangle. So let's jump into the first problem. Um, just what we want to do is remember that uh, sine ratios can apply to two different angles, um, an angle and its complement of 180. And cosine uh, always differentiates between positive and negative values to create an angle. So let's go to the first problem. We're going to be dealing with the sine law. In an obtuse triangle, angle B measures 23 degrees, while its opposite side is a length of 40 centimeters. Side A is 65 centimeters and is the longest side. So when it says the longest side, that is always going to be the angle that is opposite of our obtuse angle. The longest side must be opposite of the obtuse angle. Let's just draw the generic triangle and start to fill it in. Uh, so here, here, and there. That is a generic obtuse triangle. It says we have angle B, and it's 23 degrees. And across from it is 40 centimeters. We now have 65 centimeters here, and an obtuse angle. And the obtuse angle is what we want to find. So I see sine law written all over this as we have a pair and we have the opposite of our unknown. So 65 over the sine of theta is equal to 40 over the sine of 23. So I have skipped writing out the formula but you always should write out the formula first. We're going to rearrange the 40 comes down the side of 23 comes up uh, and the sine of theta goes up here and of course we inverse so theta is going to be equal to the sine inverse of 65 times the sine of 23 divided by 40. And what we get here, we find theta to equal 39.4 degrees. And you might at this point go, I've done my job. I found out what the angle is. But... 39.4 degrees doesn't make a whole lot of sense with our obtuse angle. Our obtuse angle is guaranteed to be greater than 90. So I know that the sine of a number can give us an angle or its complement. So its complement would be 180 subtract 39.4, which is 140.6 degrees. So that is the angle that we are looking for for theta. If you've gone to this part here um, and you stop, you've almost done it, but you need to take one more step forward. You need to find out what the angle actually is because we know that it is obtuse. Uh, I'd like you guys now, there's, yes, there's some, uh, your turn. So what you're going to do is you're going to determine the length of AB, that is this length here. Okay, so you're going to determine this length um, of this triangle. So pause it and give it a try. And when you're done, unpause it and we'll go over it together. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna find angle C because I know the other angles now. I can find out what angle C is and I need what's opposite of that side to use the sine law. So 180 subtract 140.6 subtract 23 gives me an angle C of 16.4 degrees. Now I can use that in my ratio to find out what X is. So let's move this here. Okay, so it's going to be side C, which I don't know over the sine of angle C, which I just found to be 16.4, 
is equal to 40 over the sine of 23. And that is just from my diagram, 40 and 23 are a side angle pair. I can rearrange by moving sine of 16.4 to the top. So I'll do that. C is equal to 40 times the sine of 16.4 divided by the sine of 23. And we find C to be 29 centimeters. And that number makes sense to me. It's nothing crazy. It's not, um, you know, a thousand. That would make me scratch my head and go, I wonder if that's correct. So um, if you got that one, that's the correct answer. Let's go to another problem. Ah, yes, okay, we're going to use the cosine law this time. So the roof of a house consists of two slanted sections as shown. Uh, let's draw this kind of more face on to make it easier for us. So we have a roof here with 17, 20.3, and 33.5 feet. And we have this roofing cap here, that is this part. And it is at a particular angle, and what we want to know is what that angle is. I'm gonna bet money that because we're talking about obtuse angles, and these are definitely not obtuse, that that is going to be greater than 90 degrees. Let's hope anyway. Um, a roofing cap is being made to fit, it should say fit the crown of the roof, where the two slanted sections meet. Determine the measure of the angle needed for the roofing cap. So when I have three sides and I have no angles, I'm thinking the cosine law, because I can find out what an angle is using the sides. The side opposite from the angle we want is always going out front in the left of the uh, equal sign. So the cosine law we're going to use is 35.5. Is that 35 or 33? 33. 33.5 squared is equal to 17 squared plus 20.3 squared minus 2 times 17 times 20.3 times the cosine of theta, which is what we want. So we are going to rearrange. Uh, if I take these numbers and I subtract them from this side, I'm going to subtract them from this side as well. So if I take 33.5 squared and subtract both of these, I get 421.6.16, sorry. And if I do negative two times 17 times 20.3, I get negative 690.2. And we also have the cosine of theta over here. Now to get cosine of theta all by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by this number and then inverse cosine. So theta is equal to the inverse cosine of 421.16 divided by negative 690.2. If I do these numbers equals and then punch it into my cosine inverse, I get theta to equal 127.6 degrees. And that makes sense. It is larger than 180, uh, than 90 degrees for our obtuse angle. Uh, that makes sense to me. Uh, I also know that a negative value here for a cosine will get me a value greater than 90 uh, as an angle. So that makes sense. Um, and everything looks great there. Next part is a your turn. So what it wants you to do here is determine the angle of elevation for each roof section. Wants you to find angle B and angle A. So pause it here, find out what those angles are using cosine law, sine law, or the 180 degree rule, and uh, unpause when you're done, and we'll see if you got it right. Let's see. We'll just call this A, call this B. Okay, so uh, we have our cosine uh, law, but I think I would like to use the sine law here because I have a pair, now I can use the sine law. So uh, I'm going to have 35, 33, I keep saying 35, 
divided by the sine of 127.6 is equal to, I'm going to find angle A first. So it's 20.3 divided by the sine of A. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am using this pair that I know so that I can find this angle now, sine of A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange to find A. So angle A is going to be equal to the inverse sine of 20.3 times the sine of 127.6 divided by 20, uh, pardon me, 33.5 And what we get for angle A is 23.7 degrees. I can now use the 180 degree rule to subtract the two angles that I know right here and right here from 180 to find out what angle B is. Angle B is 180, subtract 23.7, subtract 127.6 to get 28.7 degrees for angle B. Uh, if you label them differently and you got opposite values, like for A you got 28.7 and B you got 23.7, that's definitely not a problem. Um, and now, yes, check out the key, uh, key points in the need to know section, and then there's lots of practice problems for you to try. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Really appreciate it, and I'll see you soon.